Gerda sat outside talking as the clock tower struck five. And almost at the same moment, Kay felt something fall in his eye. He rubbed his eyes and splashed water on it, but whatever it was wouldn't come out. It was one of the splinters from the magic mirror. Another piece struck his heart, and even though it didn't hurt him, it slowly changed his heart into a lump of ice. Poor Kay had changed. He looked at the roses and made a face. How ugly those roses are. They are crooked and dull, said Kay. Gerda was surprised. Kay had never spoken like that before. She brought out her book of animals and they looked at it as they had done many times. But Kay closed the book shut and said, I don't want to look at these ugly, horrid animals. Kay was so grumpy and unkind that Gerda left sadly. When she came to listen to Grandma's stories, she was surprised to see Kay smirking. He stood behind Grandma and imitated the way she told stories. He's never done anything like this before, thought Gerda. What's happened to Kay? Kay imitated others too, and it wasn't pleasant at all to watch him. Time passed by quickly, and before long it was winter again. All the little boys and girls in the town went to play in the snow. Kay hardly ever played with Gerda now. One day, he took his sled and went to play with the other boys. The boldest boys often tied their sleds onto a carriage or cart and took a great ride. Kay was feeling very bold that day. When he found a pure white sled passing by, he decided that he would tie his sled onto it. Inside the carriage was a woman wrapped in white fur and she wore a matching white fur cap. The sled rushed through the snowy slopes, and Kay found it very enjoyable at first. But when it picked up speed and crossed the town, Kay was very frightened. Finally, the sled stopped. The lady stepped out and called over to Kay. Come here and sit with me. You look cold. I'll wrap you in my bearskin. She wrapped Kay and kissed him on the forehead. The kiss was colder than ice, and it went all the way to his frozen heart. As the sled took off again, the Snow Queen kissed him once more. Kay forgot his grandma, parents, and Gerda. He cuddled up near the Snow Queen's feet and slept. I'll show you the games we like to play. Sledding is my favorite game. Help me. Good job. Let's do this one more time. That's enough. I'm bored of sledding. Let's make a snowman. Our snowman looks nice, but we need to dress him up a little. Are you kidding me? These clothes would be right for a scarecrow, not a snowman. No, this is for decorating Christmas trees. Yes, this is exactly what I want. Wow, I can see a beautiful sled down there. I'd like to sled on it. We have to tie my sled to it. I do this often with my friends. Can you help me get there? Help me get to that beautiful sled. There is no way here. Good job. Thanks a lot for your help. Let's go and don't stop. Did you ever wonder what happened to Gerda after Kay went missing? Gerda waited and waited by the gate. 
But Kay did not come back. In the evening, she went to see the boys playing on their sleds. Did you see Kay? She asked. Oh yes, he tied his sled onto a big white sled and left the town, said one of the boys. Gerda was very sad. She waited and waited for Kay right through until spring. I wonder where Kay is. I hope he's safe, she thought one day. Don't worry, he's safe. The warm sunshine spoke softly. But Kay has gone forever, she wept. No, that's not true. The swallow sang. Somehow, Gerda felt better after that. She wondered what she ought to do. She went home and put on her favorite red shoes. She went to the river and spoke sadly to it. River, did you take my beloved Kay with you? Please take these shoes and give him back, she pleaded. She threw the shoes, but they were washed back onto the riverbank. I think I'll throw them farther, thought Gerda. Suddenly, she saw a boat lying among the rushes. She got into it, and from the boat, she threw her shoes as far as she could. The boat rocked and began to drift away from the shore. Gerda was scared, but she held on tight to the boat. I never thought it would be so frightening to travel on a boat all by myself, she thought. She drifted towards a cherry orchard with a little cottage right in the middle of it. Standing outside the cottage was an old woman with a crooked stick in her hand. Help, save me, Gerda cried out. The woman looked up sharply, and before long, she came rushing towards the stream and gently lifted Gerda off the boat. Where were you going all by yourself in that boat? Asked the woman. Gerda told her about Kay and asked the woman if she had seen him, but she shook her head. The woman liked Gerda very much and she'd always wanted a daughter like that. She knew a bit of witchcraft, though she was a nice and harmless woman. All she wanted was to have Gerda live with her. I'm sure the rose bushes in my garden will remind this little girl of her home and her friends, thought the woman. I'll use a bit of magic to hide them. She waved her crooked stick over the rose bushes and they sunk into the ground. Then she softly combed Gerda's long hair and said, You shall live here, little girl. And we'll get along wonderfully. It was almost as if Gerda was under some sort of spell. She stayed with the woman for a long time. They lived very happily. But one day, she noticed a rose in the woman's bonnet. The woman had forgotten to hide it. She went into the flower garden and searched everywhere for another rose. But she couldn't find one anywhere. Slowly, Gerda sat down on the ground. Oh, not a single rose can I see here. Gerda cried out. The hot tears from her eyes splashed on the earth, and immediately all the rose bushes pushed their way out of the ground. The moment she set eyes on the roses, all her memories of Kay came rushing back. The girl looked everywhere, but the woman was nowhere around. Without waiting for a moment, Gerda pushed open the rusty gate and ran out as fast as she could, even though nobody was chasing her. Oh, Kay, how did I forget you? said Gerda. I must look after you. Spring and summer have passed and it's autumn already. Back in the cherry orchard, it had been spring forever. But outside, the leaves had turned yellow and autumn was fast approaching. This is such an amazing place. There are a lot of roses here. They remind me of Kay. I must find him. All right, darling. But before you leave, can you do me a favor? Please go to the garden and gather some cherries for me. Sure. She's such a good girl. But I'm afraid that something might happen to her. It would be safer if she stayed with me. We should hide all the roses so that they won't remind her of Kay. Can you help me? That's good. Yes. Good job. I've gathered all the cherries in your garden. I have to leave now. All right, my dear. Will you allow me to comb your hair before you go? I wonder where I left my hairbrush. Can you see the hairbrush? Where can it be? There it is. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Magic comb. Please help this little girl forget her past and stop worrying. Well, this is it. Oh, I feel so light and free. I really like your house and this garden, but I can't help feeling like I've forgotten something. It's because you are tired, my little child. I have a room for you. You can rest there a while. I've not been there for a long time, so you will have to clean up the room. We need to clean the room. I see a cobweb in the corner of the ceiling. We'll brush it away. Let's fix the curtains. Now we need to make the beds. We have to remove that basket. Let's put some books in the shelf. Ah, oh, roses! The roses were missing in the garden. Oh, how could I have forgotten about Kay and our roses? I must leave. 